All right, kiddos, we left you on a cliffhanger yesterday, didn't we? Poor Mr. Tumnus had been arrested. And why had he been arrested? You tell me, do you remember why? He'd been arrested because he was supposed to capture Lucy, right? When she came to Narnia, the queen said, anyone who sees a human, capture them and bring them to me. And Mr. Tumnus didn't. When he got to know Lucy, He's like, I can't hold you captive. I have to let you go. And he had let her go back through the wardrobe to see her brothers and sisters. So they came back and they thought they were just going to visit the sweet fawn. And they found his house just ter in terrible condition. And they had taken him away and arrested him. So here we are. The children stared at each other. I don't know what I'm going to like this place after all, said Susan. Who is the queen, Lou, said Peter. Do you know anything about her? So Susan, who thought it was going to be a delightful place, was kind of changing her mind a bit, wasn't she? She isn't a real queen at all, answered Lucy. She's a horrible witch, the white witch. Everyone, all the wood people hate her. She has been, made an enchantment over the whole country so that it's always winter and never Christmas. Boy, that would be sad never to have Christmas, wouldn't it? I wonder if there's any point in going on, said Susan. I mean, it doesn't seem particularly safe here, and it looks as if we won't have much fun either. And it's getting colder every moment, and we've brought nothing to eat. What about just going home? Oh, but we can't, we can't, said Lucy suddenly. Don't you see? We can't just go home. Not after this. It's all on the, on the on account that the poor fawn has gotten into trouble. It's all on her account. She said, it's my account. It's my fault. He hid me from the witch and showed me the way back. That's what it means by comforting the queen's enemies and fraternizing with humans. Can you say fraternizing? It's a funny word, isn't it? We simply must try to rescue him. All right, what do you think? Do you think Lucy's making the right decision? Or do you think Susan is right and we should just go home? It would not be nearly as fun a story if they just went home. So I'm going to go with Lucy. What do you say? You want to go? All right, here we go. A lot we could do, said Edmund, we, when we haven't even got anything to eat. Edmund, shut up, you, said Peter. Now, don't use that language, but in this case, it was what Peter used to tell Edmund that he better stop. Shut up, you, said Peter, who was still very angry with Edmund. What do you think, Susan? I have a horrid feeling that Lou is right, said Susan. I don't want to go a step further, and I wish we'd never come. But I think we must try to do something for poor Mr. What's-his-name. I mean, the fawn. That's what I feel, too, said Peter. These are good kids, aren't they? They don't want to, they don't want to leave him. I'm worried about having no food with us. I'd vote to for going back and getting some from the larder, only there doesn't seem to be any certainty that getting into this country again would happen when you've got out of it. I think we better just go on. So do you remember why he's saying that? Because when he and Susan looked after Lucy said, I've been through the wardrobe and I found this wonderful land, they went to the wardrobe and it was just a back of a wardrobe. You kind of never know when the door to, op um, to Narnia will be open. Makes it more fun. So he said, I think we better just go on. So do I, said both girls. If only we knew where the poor chap was in prison, said Peter. They were all still wondering what to do next when Lucy said, look, there's a robin with such a red breast. You know, I saw a robin just like that in my yard yesterday. Mr. Chris and I were sitting, we were just watching them having such a fun time. What do you think? Do you guys like birdies? All right, see what happens with this robin. It's the first bird I've seen here, I say. I wonder, can birds talk in Narnia? Hmm. It almost looks as if it wanted to say something to us. Then she turned to the robin and said, Please, can you tell us where Tumnus the fawn has been taken to? And she said this. As she said this, she took a step toward the little bird. It once flew away, but only as far as to the next tree. There it perched and looked at them very hard, as if it understood all they'd been saying. Almost without noticing that they had done so, the four children went 
a step or two nearer to it. At this the robin flew away, at once again, to the next tree, and once more, and looked at them very hard. You couldn't have found this robin with a redder chest or a brighter eye, so it would look like a very trustworthy robin. Do you know, said Lucy, I really believe he means for us to follow him. I've had the idea he does, said Susan. What do you think, Peter? Well, we might as well give it a try. So they think that the robin is going from tree to tree, marking a path for them to follow. What do you think of that? The robin appeared to understand the matter thoroughly. It kept going from tree to tree, always a few yards ahead of them, but always so near that they could easily follow it. In this way, it led them on slightly downhill. Wherever the robin alighted, its little, a little shower would fall down of snow. Presently, the clouds parted overhead, and the winter sun came out, and the snow all around them grew dazzling bright. They had been traveling in this way for about a half an hour with the two girls in the front when Edmund said to Peter, If you're not still high and mighty to talk to me, I've something to say which you'd better listen to. Edmund did not have a good attitude. What is it? said Peter. Hush, not so loud, said Edmund. There's no good frightening the girls. But you have realized but you've realized what we're doing. What? said Peter, lowering his voice to whisper. We're following a guide we know nothing about. How do we know which bird which side this bird is on? Why shouldn't it be leading us into a trap? That's a nasty idea. Still, a robin, you know. They're good birds in all the stories I've ever read. I'm sure the robin wouldn't be on the wrong side. Have you guys read stories about birds? Are they usually good in stories? That's what Peter's trusting. If it comes down to that which is the right side, how do you know that the fawns are in the right and the queen, yes, I know we've been told she's a witch, is in the wrong? We don't really know anything about either. Except for Edmund does, doesn't he? He knows. The fawn saved Lucy. He said he did, but how do we know? And there's another thing, too. Has anyone the least idea of the way home from here? Great Scott, said Peter. Another great British term. Great Scott. I hadn't thought of that. And no chance of dinner either, said Edmund. All right. Next week, we're going to start a really fun chapter. See where the birdie leads them. See where they end up and see where more adventure begins. Yay.